Welcome. In this lesson, we are going to look at confidence interval for mean for small sample. Now, what makes this question a small sample? Let's quickly read the question, then we know what makes it a small sample question. Okay. It said 10 randomly selected Conti boys were asked how long they slept at night. The mean time was 7.1 hours and the standard deviation was 0.78 hours. Find a 95% confidence interval for the mean time and assume the variable is normally distributed. To know if something is a small sample, it must meet some three things or some three conditions. Number one, the, the variable should be normally distributed. And secondly, the sample size should be less than 30. So when you look at this, they said 10 randomly selected. So 10 is less than 30. That's it. The second condition has been met. Then let's look at the third condition. The third condition is that the standard deviation should be a sample standard deviation. It shouldn't be a population standard deviation. So when you look at this standard deviation, it's a sample standard deviation. The reason why it's a sample standard deviation is that, though they've not written sample or population there, but what makes it a sample standard deviation is that when you look at the English they've spoken, they said 10 randomly selected Kunzi boys were asked how long they slept at night. The mean time was 7.1. The mean time of what? The mean time of this sample of 10 is 7.1 hours. And the standard deviation was 0.78 hours. The conjunction here means that both this mean and this standard deviation are referring to this 10. They are both referring to this 10 together. So if this mean is a sample mean, then this standard deviation too should be a sample standard deviation because of the conjunction there. Kofi and Ama are Mr. Benson's uh, children. Meaning, they are both referring to this person. As you can see. So the formula we are going to use here, we are going to use the T. Okay. So therefore, sample mean minus T multiplying standard deviation divided by root N less than mu, less than sample mean plus T multiplying sample standard deviation divided by root n. This is the formula you are going to use. Remember, you can also use it this way. Sample mean plus or minus t multiplying standard deviation over root n. You can use this as well, but you know there is a plus or minus, so you have to work them according. But I'm using this formula in my example. Now, according to the question, what was the sample mean? The sample mean was 7.1, isn't it? Minus, what to be our t? Now, to find a t, you are going to use the confidence you've been given to find a t. Now, this is how it is done. Now, to find a t, you find alpha. And alpha is a level of significance. And alpha is equal to 1 minus 0 0.95. This 1 minus 0 0.95 The 0 0.95 comes from the 95%. 95 divided by 100 is 0 0.95. So 1 minus 0 0.95 is 0 0.05. Then you find alpha divided by 2. Alpha divided by 2, that 0 0.05 divided by 2 gives you a 0 0.025. Okay. Then you also find a degree of freedom. The degree of freedom is n minus 1, which is, what is your n according to the question? Our n was 10 minus 1, which is 9. So to check it on the z table, on the t table, sorry, you take your t table. Now you search for the degree of freedom of 9, which is here, 9. Now, when you look at the alpha, in case you want to use the alpha alone without dividing it by 2 to check it, that is 0 0.05, you have to go and check where they've written 2 tailed test, 0 0.05 two-tailed test, where they've written two-tailed test, 0 0.05, then you check it accordingly, you get 2.262, so your T value is what? 2.262. In case you want to use the alpha divided by two to check it, be very careful with this. If you want to use the alpha divided by two to check it, you have to check where they've written one-tailed test, so 0 0.025. When you check it, you get the same answer. So it, it depends on you, whether you want to use alpha to check it or alpha divided by 2 to check it. But when you are using alpha, make sure you check where they've written 2 tail tests under this topic. Don't go and check where they've written 1 tail test. 
when you are using alpha divided by two, then you can check where they've written one table test. Thank you. So our t is 2.262. So you substitute it here, 2.262 times, what is the sample standard deviation? 0 0.78, all divided by root, root 10, all divided by root 10, less than mu, less than 7.1, plus 2.262 times 0 0.78 divided by root 10. So quickly, let's see what it will give us. Now, when you calculate, you have 7.1 minus. When you do 2.262 times 0 0.78 divided by root 10, you are going to get 0 0.55, 55, sorry, 79. This part, the part that comes after the sign, where you get a 0 0.5579, it's called margin of error. Please don't forget that. We call it margin of error. Less than mu, less than 7.1 plus 0 0.5579. So, 7.1 minus this, when you do it well, you get 6.5421. Less than mu, less than... 7.1 plus 0 0.5579 also gives you what? 7.6579. So you've been able to estimate the confidence interval for the mean in a small sample. You can also leave your answer in two decimal places. In two decimal places, you'll be 6 point what? 6.54. Less than mu, less than 7.66. What matters is that when you leave this place in three decimal places. Make sure you leave this part two in three decimal places. When you leave the lower bound in two decimal places, make sure you leave the upper bound two in what? In two decimal places. Now, at times two, if you want to know if you've not made any mistake or something or you've not deviated or something, you can add the two answers. The two, the upper bound and the lower bound, add them together and divide it by two and check if you get the sample mean of 7.1. If you're able to get a sample mean back again, meaning you've not made a mistake in your work, like so that's one trick of determining if you've done something you're on the you're on the right track or not. So you add the lower bound and the upper bound together and divide it by two. Okay, so that is the end of this lesson. Thank you.